Now we're going to discuss reactions of thiols. And if you guys remember, thiols are the sulfur analog of alcohols, meaning that they look exactly like alcohols, except that the oxygen is replaced for a sulfur. How's that going to change the molecule? Is it going to react just like an alcohol? Let's find out. So, thiols are more acidic than a typical alcohol. If you guys think about it, that has to do with the fact that sulfur is a little bit bigger in size. And the size effect said that as the bigger the molecules get, the easier it is to give up an H and get a lone pair. Okay? So thiols are going to contain a very acidic hydrogen. Okay? So what that means is that it's going to be easy to pull off that hydrogen and easy to make it a nucleophile after it's exposed to base. Okay? So after you expose it to base, pull off that hydrogen, it's going to be a great nucleophile. Just so you guys know, that nucleophile, once the sulfur has a negative charge on it, is called a thiolate. Okay? So a thiolate nucleophile is going to be capable of performing a few different reactions. That's what we want to go over right now. So we can do sulfide synthesis through a thiol, and we can also do disulfide synthesis. Let's start off with the easier one which is sulfide synthesis. So in sulfide synthesis, I start off with my thiol, right? That looks just like an alcohol, except it's got the S, right? And I react it with base, okay? The base is gonna deprotonate the H and make my thiolate anion. Then that thiolate anion performs an SN2 reaction on an alkyl halide and alkylates, okay? So what we wind up getting is a sulfide, basically the analog to an ether, just with a S, instead of the O for the ether, okay? Let's go ahead and look at how this, this full mechanism, let's draw it out and make sure that we're all on the same page. So in my first step, my base is gonna grab the acidic hydrogen of my thiol. Obviously the hydrogen doesn't wanna have two bonds, so I make a bond, I break a bond, and I wind up getting, what is this called? My negative charge on my S, this is my thiolate anion. Cool? So I've got my thiolate anion. Now what can that do when exposed to an alkyl halide? Well, if it's exposed to the right type of alkyl halide, I'm going to be able to do an SN2. Okay. Now what do I mean by right type? Well, obviously if this is a tertiary alkyl halide, would that be able to work? No, because remember that tertiary alkyl halides cannot perform an SN2 reaction. But in most cases, if it's primary or secondary, it's going to work, okay? So I'm just going to add here that this would have to be a primary or secondary alkyl halide, okay? So now I've got my backside attack, my SN2 reaction, and what I'm going to get as my product is simply a sulfur with now whatever that R group was, okay? Now whatever that R group, it could be whatever I wanted, I just pick the alkyl halide of choice, cool? So that's how we make a sulfide out of a thiol. Not bad at all, right? Now let's talk about disulfides. Disulfides are a little bit more tricky. So notice that once again, I'm starting off with a thiol, which looks a lot like an alcohol. If that had been an O, that would be methanol, right? So this is methanthiol because it's a, a, an SH, okay? So I've got my, meth, my, I've got my thiol. I've got my base again. So notice that the first step is going to be exactly the same. My first step is going to be a base reacting with my thiol to take off the H. The weird thing is that then I've got this halogenation thing going on, or this Br2, okay? So let me explain how that works just through the mechanism, okay? So let's go down to the disulfide synthesis mechanism. What we're going to find is that the first step everyone should be able to draw, okay? Your OH grabs the acidic hydrogen and you wind up getting this, this very familiar intermediate. What is this called? This is my thiolate. Okay, so now I've got that thiolate. Now I expose that to a diatomic halogen. And this is interesting. The diatomic halogen is going to be able to be attacked, okay? So my sulfur will grab one of the BRs, kick the other one out. What I wind up getting is something that looks like this, where I've got sulfur BR. Okay, and then I've got a Br negative just hanging out. Cool so far? Awesome. So now here's the interesting thing, okay? Not only am I gonna make one thiolate, but I could, I could make several thiolates, okay? Because I'm gonna have excess base, so it's gonna basically deprotonate 
all of that, all, all most of those hydrogens, okay? So what happens in the next step is we're just going to go ahead and bring this down over here, okay? And what we're going to find out is that a second thiolate, so this would be my times two, this is my second thiolate, can actually do a backside attack on this sulfur, okay? And it would kick out the leaving group. So what you're going to wind up getting at the end of this is a disulfide, where you have S, S, and then a symmetrical disulfide. Okay, you'd have a disulfide product. Okay, and that disulfide would be symmetrical because of the fact that you're going to use the same thiolate twice, right? Okay, so you get your th disulfide, and you just get even more Br leaving group. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. We're not we're not paying attention to the Br. We're really paying attention to the organic product, which is our disulfide. Cool. So none of these reactions are hard. I know we're not used to dealing a lot with sulfur, but it's really not that tricky. Okay. So I hope that made sense. Those are the two really common reactions that thiols undergo. And if you have any questions, let me know. But if not, let's move on.